All right, in this video, I want to talk about exceptions to the octet rule. Um, I spent a lot of uh, videos and time kind of going over, uh, you know, how to draw out all of the different octets, and I use these rules um, or these uh, guidelines to kind of go by, and that's that, you know, halogens don't like to form double or triple bonds. Oxygen does not like to form triple bonds. It will form double, but not triple bonds. Uh, hydrogen does not like to form uh, double or triple bonds, and that kind of makes sense if you remember back because hydrogen only has two electrons. And then that uh, carbon loves to be the central atom. Uh, so those were kind of the guidelines we went to form this octet rule uh, where valence electrons um, all had uh, eight. They formed eight valence electrons and two for hydrogen and helium. So that's kind of the process we were going. In this video, I want to kind of introduce a new concept to this, and that's basically that um, this was a rule, and if you remember I said it was a rule and not a law because it has exceptions. Um, and this is kind of one of the exceptions, and it's basically um, that generally, and there's a lot of, you'll notice a lot of weasel words in chemistry, there's always an exception it seems like to something you've learned um, in chemistry as you get up, you know, increase and increase in your uh, different um, levels of chemistry education, but anyway, generally, if a nonmetal is in the third period or greater, or third energy level um, or greater, uh, if you kind of look on a periodic table here, if it's in this level right here, this is the first energy shell or level or first period, second, third, uh, if it's in the third or higher, it can accommodate uh, more valence electrons, and that's because uh, this 3D, this D, the D orbitals start to be introduced on the third energy level, um, and the the D orbitals can house more electrons. And that'll come something later as far as hybridization and stuff that we'll get into um, later on. But uh, generally, and I'll write this out for you. Generally, if a a nonmetal, and let me write nonmetal even. So we're talking about covalent bonds here. Oh, only one T and metal. Non-metal. Change back to my color there. Is in the third energy level or shell because some people call it energy level some people call it energy shell you'll notice that um, throughout maybe your your chemistry career maybe you already have energy shell or just period third period because it's all the same uh, if it's in the third energy shell um, or period or whatever it can accommodate or it, it can have as many as you know sometimes you'll see these and some of the ones will will work out are gonna have up to as many as 12 electrons now I don't know if that's the cap uh, on on them or not that's the most I've ever worked out and done is 12 electrons and that's generally is what you'll see is that you know 12 electrons is about the uh, the max on what you'll see, but I don't know if that's necessarily a you know concrete finite. It is in all cases 12, um, 12 valence electrons, but generally that's what you're going to see. And this is basically because you know due to the d orbitals. And let me just bring the periodic table back up here. So like let's let's take one of the examples we're going to. Uh, uh, work out with this is going to be um, uh, oops, my, it's going to be uh, xenon and right here and basically we're going to be able to um, fill up uh, up to 12 electrons with xenon here because of these 5d this is I think one two three four five yeah because of the 5d go down to the six energy shell and you'll find the 5d orbitals and you may be asking as we're asking yourself as we're drawing this out, and this is the same question I had uh, when learning this, was 
Well, it, it goes from xenon, we have a 5 or a 6s and then a 5d orbital. Why does it just kind of skip and bypass this 5 or 6s, pardon me, um, energy shell and go straight to the 5d? And we'll, I'm, I'm going to do another video that will hopefully uh, kind of address this issue. But for this video, I just want to kind of introduce you to the fact that there are exceptions to the octet rule. Um, we can follow these same guidelines that we did with the octet rule uh, to get to uh, more than eight valence electrons. And in fact, I think that by uh, knowing these uh, all of these uh, guidelines for the octet rule, that it will even make it kind of uh, more obvious to find uh, more than eight valence electrons on the ones where it does occur. But uh, if, if you see, one thing you just kind of need to look for is if you see an element uh, in your compound that is in the third energy shell, shell or higher, you just, might just keep in the back of your mind, okay, this may have more, this may be an exception, have more uh, than eight valence electrons. Another kind of giveaway um, that it's going to have, or, or that it may have more uh, than eight valence electron is if it involves fluorine. Fluorine tends to be um, uh, the wrench in the gear for the octet rule. So um, that's uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, in the next couple videos, I'm going to work these out and actually show examples and all these work. Um, so uh, look forward to the next couple videos.